Well, you can see the yard still got a pretty decent color to it. Let's get down here close and I'll show you a few things that some of you guys may be dealing with. Of course, I got to go back up and blow all the leaves up. It's crappy, but you can see this right here. Just a little tiny bit of tip burn. The more grass I pull up, the more tip burn you see. Nothing really spectacular about that. The frost has kind of hit it hard. Of course, you mow the yard one time, all that brown tip goes away. Then why don't you mow it? Because I'm not ready to mow it. That's why. Once I mow, that means I'm telling the grass to wake up. Okay, mowing is basically pruning. Anytime you prune something, you're encouraging growth. I don't want it to grow right now because we're not in the lawn care season yet. So when you're prepping for the upcoming lawn care season, if you're new, the first thing you need to uh, know and understand is what turf type do I have? Do you have fescue? Do you have bluegrass, ryegrass? Do you have Bermuda? And most of the time, the type of turf you have is dictated by where you live in the country. If you don't have a clue what kind of turf type you have, if you're new to this, I encourage you to take advantage of our customer service. I have a full-blown team that you can send us an email in with pictures of your yard. We'll take a look at it, tell you what kind of turf grass you have, and then point you in the right direction where you can get started. Second thing you need to do is you need to have a systematic approach, a step-by-step -step program. The program is what you're going to do to the yard throughout the entire year. When you've taken care of turf grass for 20 years like I have, you kind of get all that stuff figured out. So that's why I wrote my homeowner DIY lawn care guide. In that guide, whether you have fescue or Bermuda or bluegrass or rye, it will take you through step by step every single detail that you possibly need to know about growing turf and having a yard that absolutely stands out. Oh, and that's uh, turf type tall fescue uh, with bluegrass in it, cool blue. And then it's got a pinch of rye in it. Not much, just a pinch. And here's my full stand of Kentucky bluegrass. And it has just a pinch of rye in it, uh, not much. I mean, I'd say a few percent. I mean, it's such a light dusting that I used out here. You know, you really, there's really no significant amount, but I'm going to tell you what. That's the GCI Turf Blue Heat. You can see how lush and thick and dense that is. It is an absolute fantastic turf grass. So if you're new to the channel, my name is Pete. Glad you stopped by. I've uh, been in the lawn care industry for 20 years. I have 13 employees and our main part of our business is fertilization weed control growing turf and then we also have a maintenance division uh where we maintain you know the property entire property so my 13 employees include office staff and then my uh the rest of the guys they actually go out and do spraying the yards and, and mowing and that kind of thing then I do all the ball field work, all the gravel driveway work, uh, painting the athletic fields, and any of the specialized type stuff. And of course, I do YouTube. If you need references, if you need my resume, there's one of my resumes right there. Matter of fact, let me give you a real good look at them. That's a 20 year resume. And that's a 20 year resume. Yep, that's what I use. I work with my hands day in and day out. Absolutely love my job. The best knowledge to have is experience. And I've got it. I've been there, done that when it comes to lawn care in the yard, growing turf, applications, sprayers, you name it. It doesn't matter, all of it. It's just what I do. and. So if you're wanting to learn how to do all that, you're in the right place. You know, what I'm going to do today is go over uh, how I get prepped for the season, what I do to get prepared for the lawn care season. 
and mowing and spraying and products and all that kind of thing. This will probably be one of the last videos I make when it comes to yard stuff uh, for a couple of weeks probably because my mower review series is just about ready. And that's going to be 16, maybe 16 videos, 17 maybe. And they're going to post 17, 16, 17 days in a row consecutively. And uh, you know, I, I don't want to mess up that flow. So I'm going to make this video today how to get ready. And then and, and I'll actually do my round one application and film it. But you won't see that until after that mower review series is passed. This is my right walk behind mower. And of course, it's supposed to be yellow, but uh, I had asked Wright if they would paint it black for me. And uh, of course, I bought it like any other person buys a mower through my dealer. It's just I asked to get it painted black and they were kind enough to do that. So definitely will check the oil, uh, hydraulic fluid. Uh, I'll actually go through the trouble and pull it outside and fire it up, let it run for seven, eight, ten minutes, let it get up to operating temperature. Check everything for leaks, uh, check my tire pressure, make sure all that's good to go. Uh, I got my big league lawn roller back here for when I want to stripe. Of course, I've got those on the website. I'll link those up below. And then my mower blades, uh, keeping sharp mower blades is super important for a healthy turf. And I sharpen mine roughly every 10 to 12 hours-ish of mowing. Uh, I've got a little side hustle business called reedgit.com and you can mail as your mower blades and I will sharpen them and they will be absolutely uh, as close to perfect as they can po possibly get. And we'll ship them right back to you. Perfectly balanced, clean, razor sharp, ready to go. Now when I'm spreading granular, uh, typically, you know, I'll use my turfware right here. I'm a busy guy. And, uh, you know, my time is crazy, uh, limited. So for me to push 30,000 square feet with a push spreader, when I've got a ride on spreader, doesn't make any sense. Now, does this make sense for most homeowners? Absolutely not. I mean, I'm not dare encouraging any homeowner to go out and buy one of these. If you got a small yard, it's just, it's pointless. Of course, if you had a bigger yard and you just have to weigh out what they cost versus how important your time is, and then you can make that decision yourself. Um, I am a dealer for these guys, the pro guys. If you're interested in the turfware, I'll link that up below. But basically, same thing. I'll check my oil fluids, pull it outside, uh, make sure the thing's running good, let it get up to operating temperature. I'll put a little water in my spot spray tank, put some water in my main tanks, spray, run through all my nozzles, check my spray boom, make sure everything is functioning as is, make sure there's no leaks anywhere, and that'll be good to go. Now, we have these flow zones on the website as well, and they're incredibly popular. This is a battery-powered sprayer. You can look at this like a DIY homeowner pro sprayer i guess because you don't have to pump okay the pump is just uh who in the world wants to pump it's inaccurate it's boring and it you know you get a good arm workout but that's about it so a lot of homeowners use this uh, as opposed to a pump type sprayer the way i teach calibration i like for calibration to be super accurate and detailed because uh, sometimes we're applying some pretty strong chemicals and we want to be super accurate with that you can maintain constant pressure uh, using a battery powered sprayer versus something like a pump with a handle on it so that's why i always encourage uh, homeowners to it, it, bare minimum you should own a battery powered sprayer this is a typhoon this is the newer model you can see it's a little bit sleeker looking in design the Typhoon uh, is no different than the Cyclone. Uh, they're two different models, just one has a little bit more pressure than the other. 
the Typhoon has more pressure. That's the only difference. And here's kind of the big brother. This is a monsoon. This is a nine gallon where those other two are four gallon. Comes with wheels, you can roll it around. Comes with a lot of extra spray hose back there. And that's just a bigger version is all that is. And here's my lawn care products right here. And of course, I don't use all that on the yard, just some of it. But when you own a lawn care company and you've been doing this 20 years, uh, you just have a lot of different chemicals. So you know, who knows how some of that made it in here, but it just did. Bare bones basics for uh, homeowners. Uh, can't go wrong with speed zone or broadleaf. Uh, it's a good one. Uh, Triad Select is a three-way that I also have on the website um, that's really good. A little crabgrass control, disease control, some insecticide. Got some Roundup right there. Uh, Green County Fertilizer Lime, uh, the humic acid products. Use uh, quite a bit of those on my yard throughout the year. The O2YS, I use a buttload of that. And here recently, you know, I've got my own line of uh, GCI liquids, which I'm going to be running a full-blown GCI turf liquid program on my yard this year, both the bluegrass and the uh, fescue. And the reason I'm going to be running all liquid, oh, that's dirty, I need to clean that up, is I need to show you guys a lot of spraying with my spray buddies. I've created this specifically for the homeowner. And what it does is it allows the homeowner to take advantage of a full-blown pro spray system, but you don't have to go out and spend six, seven, eight thousand dollars on a big skid sprayer and store it in your garage. This is a miniature version of that, and it hangs on the wall. And you can see you got your hose drill right here. Tanks right here. This is the dual 15 gallon version. Of course, they come in a 5, 10, 15 gallon and a dual 15 gallon. So there's four different options to fit all the different size yards. If that is out of the question for you, then check out my mix buddy. And this is basically a 15 gallon setup that you pre mix your material for your backpack sprayer. Now, if your yard's small enough to where you just mix one backpack sprayer full and you're done spraying, then obviously this is no good to you. But if you have to mix three, four, five, six times or whatever, then the mix buddy might be a good option for you. That way uh, you can pre-mix everything and, and it will speed up your overall spray time tremendously by pre-mixing. And of course, with the Spray Buddy and the Cart Buddy, I'll show you a Cart Buddy in a second, but the Spray Buddy, Cart Buddy lineup, uh, that's a huge advantage for the homeowner that has, you know, a little bit of uh, square footage to where you don't have to mix up multiple backpack sprayers and take half day, three quarters of a day to spray. You mix everything up at one time, spray your yard one time with one fill up, and you're done. And you get the added benefit of being able to spray at high volume, you know, one gallon, even up to two gallon per thousand. And I check my weed eaters and things like that. And I use a battery powered Ego back here on the bluegrass. And I use the rotary power scissors for the head. I've got those on the website as well. And depending on how big of a rush I'm in, uh, I'll use my little Ego battery blower. Or I use my steel PB8010T and anything with a gas motor uh, like my mower and my turfware, I always just pull it outside, fire it up, let it run, get up to operating temperature, make sure everything's working good and make sure uh, I don't have to take anything to the shop to get anything repaired before I get into hot and heavy uh, mowing action. I've got a Echo gas powered string trimmer that I will use up here on the fescue and all that. And the reason I use the rotary scissors back here on the blue is because I cut the bluegrass a lot shorter and it's just easier to get a good clean tight cut with those scissors as opposed to a string trimmer. Whereas my fescue, uh, of course I cut it a little bit higher 
and a string trimmer just tends to work better. You can see all my pruning is done. Uh, that's a lace cap hydrangea. I do need to cut that back a little bit. This Jap maple could use a little bit of trimming right up there because it's starting to hit the outskirts of my pergola. Still got to cut down my liripe. You know, some people call it monkey grass. You got to just cut it down to about four inches. Make sure all my you know sticks and stuff are up and that kind of thing. Limbs that have fallen. Just give the beds a good cleaning before I put down fresh pine needles. And of course that'll be in the next couple of weeks or so. I'll get that done. And once I get all that done, I'm waiting on the weather to break. Because I'll be ready to start mowing. Remember me telling you about the uh, 5, 10, 15 gallon spray buddy and the dual 15 gallon spray buddy, which is a total of 30. Well, this is a 20 gallon version uh, that rolls around on a cart like that. For the most part, every single part on this is made in America. And of course, we, we do a lot of the build in-house uh, casters made in America, frames I get made locally in America, Hene reels made in America, tanks made in America, all the fittings and the spray hose all made in America. So pretty much, uh, you know, you get you one of these bad boys and you're supporting American businesses, which I'm 100% all about. That's right, here's the 20 gallon spray buddy. And you can see it has legs where it just basically sits in this frame against the wall. And then here's your hose reel right here that you would pull off of. So you don't actually tote the tank around. You, the tank is stationary. All my sprayers that uh, we make in-house, uh, they all have built-in agitation. So it's continuously mixing while you're adding your material and while you're spraying. It's mixing the whole entire time. Here's a few little pieces in my arsenal. Uh, we custom make uh, handgun triggers that are considerably better than what you would get with your flow zone backpack sprayer. Not knocking those, they work just fine. I've been using them for years. But uh, these actually were made to you be used with the spray buddy and cart buddy line, but as an added bonus, you know, you can use them with your backpack sprayer as well. Spray booms, we make all these in-house. I got a five banger and a two banger, meaning the two banger has two nozzles on it and the five banger, you can see, has five nozzles on it and sprays a pretty wide path. So hopefully something in this video has helped you get pumped up about the 2024 lawn care season. And you can see it's pretty simple with me i don't i don't have a lot on my plate to to get ready it's a mower and a blower and a spreader and that's it and of course my spray equipment i've tested out too before i get going so feel free to stick around subscribe to the channel and uh, this year we'll be in the yard quite a bit i'll show you a lot of tips and tricks a lot of the way pro applicators like myself take care of turf you know what i've really tried to do here on youtube is provide the homeowner with professional means of applying things to the yard and professional ways of managing your turf and you can go on my website and look at reviews and you can decide for yourself if i've done a good job at that or a bad job i appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch this i'll check you later